Thanks, Chris. Conservative Book Club members, thank you for listening to our weekly author interview podcast series. I'm Chris Malagisi, editor-in-chief of the Conservative Book Club, now with over 700,000 members nationwide. Today we have an exclusive author interview with Matthew Bentley, the author of the new book Oath of Honor, a Logan West thriller, published by Atria and Emily Bessler Books. Many of you will remember Matt from his previous book, Overwatch, which came out last year and was one of our featured books on our site. But in his new book, Oath of Honor, it's a breakneck, edge-of-your-seat thriller that moves from a resurgent Russian threat in the Aleutian Islands to North Korean spy ships to secretive Sudanese prisons as former Marines Logan West and John Quick, now members of an FBI special task force, uncover a global conspiracy to that threatens America's position in the current international balance of power. Just a little background on Matthew. Matthew is a former Marine officer of 10 years. His experience includes deployments to Africa after September 11th and Iraq prior to the surge. He's a New Jersey native who considers Cincinnati home. He graduated from Miami University in Oxford, Ohio with a BA in psychology and minors in political science and sociology. Um, as I said, uh, Matt spent 10 years as a Marine officer and was trained as a scout sniper platoon commander, an infantry officer, and a ground intelligence officer, and has been stationed again all over in Fallujah, Iraq, um, and both in staff officer support billets. Finally, and most importantly, uh, Matt is a recovering alcoholic with nearly eight years of sobriety and very open and honest about it, and he credits the Marine Corps with providing a foundation and discipline and personal accountability for his desire to initially seek help. Uh, he's open and direct about it and has spoken in front of large groups of people with one clear message. If he can get sober, so can anyone. He credits his recovery with providing the authenticity for Logan West, the main character in his novels, with the struggle with his inner demons. Uh, the book is getting some wonderful praise already, uh, including authors Steve Barry and Kyle Mills. With Kyle Mills saying, Batley continues to turn the screws with the relentless action, unbearable tension, and terrifying threats that we all loved in Overwatch. With Oath of Honor, he cements his position as one of the genre's new stars. Matt, congratulations on the new book, and thank you for joining the Conservative Book Club today. Thanks, Chris. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. Well, Matt, tell us a little bit about the book and the next adventure of Logan West. Well, uh, Oath of Honor actually starts two years after the events of Overwatch. Uh, at this point in the saga, and it's also important to note that I initially planned out a three-book series with Logan West and John Quick, and it's now evolved at this point into a, at least a six-book series. Um, but with book two, Oath of Honor, starts two years after the events of Overwatch, and Logan and John are tasked with investigating a hit on a Russian cell phone uh, that's been associated with a clandestine operations group, and they're located near Dutch Harbor, Alaska, which everyone should recognize from the TV show Deadly as Catch. Mm. Um, it, it, it triggers a gunfight, a boat chase, and a car chase across the island, and from there, they start gallivanting across the world, uh, trying to track down the people that stole some next-generation U.S. technology. And, and they go from there to Spain, to Africa, and, and like you described, it's a relentless pace throughout the entire novel. Where do you get your influences from, and how, how do you come up with these stories? Because they're just fascinating and very exciting. Well, it's really funny. Uh, you know, I spent 10 years as an officer in the Marine Corps. I was in Fallujah, Iraq, uh, which helped provide background for the flashback sequences as part of Logan's origin story. Uh, with the second one, um, I, I kind of looked at, I, I, at the time when I was in Africa after 9-11, I was also a senior Sudan analyst. So for the second half of the book, I used that part of my background and incorporated that into the novel, again, from a very fictitious standpoint. Um, but I, look, I just kind of look, uh, look at what's going on in the world, and I say, well, how do I incorporate some of these themes and some of this technology that's being developed and just try and tell a really entertaining pace? You know, for me, I'm not trying to tell a war memoir or a blow-by-blow blow that feels like a band of brothers. I am trying to tell these action-packed blockbuster roller coaster rides 
that grab you from the very beginning and don't let go until that final page has turned. And in doing so, I want to do it, though, with real special forces units, uh, real weapons, real technology, but again, in, in a very entertaining and wild way. Uh, it definitely shows when you read it. And you know, speaking about using experiences from the world, um, Russia is a bad actor in your book, uh, is so, so the bad guy uh, in many respects. How would you characterize if, um, you know, the relationship between the U.S. and Russia these days? Because obviously there's, there's a lot going on. There's lots in the news about Putin and Trump and their relationship. And um, I, I'm just curious to get your thoughts on where America and Russia stand today. Well, it's interesting that Russia is now in the news today. Uh, what I'll say is that I actually finished that book over two years ago oh. before we had the allegations of hacking and things like that. And I will also point out there are multiple bad actors, but then there's the overarching thing that's going on behind the scenes that kind of connects them all together. Mm -hmm. uh, so so on, the, on its face, yes, Russia is a, a bad actor at the beginning of the book. Um, regarding today, I kind of, uh, to be honest, I, it, those are things I kind of avoid. I, you know, w what I'll say is I'm a pragmat pragmatic guy. I, I kind of believe that the more we can work with everybody, the better off things will be. Um, re regardless, you know, we, we can't be the, the, the world's police officer at all times. Sometimes, you know, you have to work with people you don't agree with on a, on a security or even a moral level sometimes. But, again, I'm just speaking for myself on that one. Well, no, I totally understand, and, and uh, you know, thank you for your service, too, all those years and such a volatile time period. I can only imagine how um, your experience with all that you've done played a role in your books, too, and do you um, so? Do you use a lot of the military experience that you have as part of the inspiration for what you write? Oh, absolutely! And now it's not my personal experience. Like I wasn't running around running and gunning like Logan West. Now I did have a <laughs> ton of. Ta I mean, I had a ton of tactical <laughs> training at one point. Believe me. Um, but you know, again, I'm writing fiction. However, the banter, especially in the Marine Corps, the sarcasm. The dialogue, that's all very authentic and very realistic. Um, and, and then, again, when you're talking about deployments and units and where people work, again, I try and bring that kind of authenticity. But, you know, at some point in, in this series, that also evolves because incor I'm incorporating new characters and I'm taking the story into kind of a bigger, bigger scope. So. Mm -hmm. What what do you attribute to your success? And you know, it, you know, others like Kyle Mills and Steve Barry's and others' success in this genre. Um, what why do you think the American people are really interested in these type of books? Well, I think first and foremost, especially when you're reading fiction, you want to be entertained. Now, for me, and I've told this story countless times. Um, I never wanted to be an author, ever. That was never, like, even something I considered to do. I was always excellent with grammar. I was always great at writing other kinds of formal documents. But for me, it started uh, because I read an international bestseller that Stephen King had recommended in Entertainment Weekly years ago. <laughs> and I was on vacation, and I read this book. And I like action-packed thrillers, you know, like early Tom Clancy. And I was bored out of my mind, and I literally turned to my <laughs> wife, and I said, I can just get a job in this. That's all it took. I obsessed about it for a full year, and then I sat down, and I, sat, and I wrote a five-year plan out, and I committed to myself that I'm going to write what I would want to read, no matter what anybody else says about it. And I stayed true to that for the first two books, and I'm all actually almost done with book three for next year as well. Well, that answers my next question. I was just going to ask you, what's next for Logan, and, and is there a third book? And do you well, see? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, yeah. So, so where we are right now is we actually signed another deal for books three and four. Uh, we're doing it in two book installments. So, book right. three, uh, which. Uh, uh, actually, I don't want to give away anything for book three because no one has even read book two yet. Um, <laughs> but, but what I'll say is uh, book three and book four are – book three is almost done. Book four is planned out completely. 
Um, and then I'm going to start working on books five and six. Uh, and there were also, I mean, last year has been fantastic since Overwatch came out. We are also fortunate to be in uh, movie discussions with uh, a couple studios. So I'm represented by creative artists, and we've got two producers and a screenwriter on board, although we haven't actually sold the option at this point. But we're in that discussion, actually, either this week or next. Oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations, and well-deserved. And I, I, I will buy the first ticket for sure. <laughs> Thank you. I, if you think publishing's hard, getting anything into Hollywood is a totally different <laughs> and insane process in and to itself. Uh, you know, it makes publishing feel easy. Trust me, it's not because it could stay and fall apart. I mean, we have it; no one's bought it yet. But you know, we're we're we're, posi- we're in a good position. Well, that's wonderful, Matthew. Congratulations to you, and thank you, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And everybody, make sure you go out and buy the book "Oath of Honor," a Logan West thriller. And you can learn more about Matt on conservativebookclub.com, and you can learn more about his new book and his previous book. But thanks again, Matt, so much for joining us today. Again, thanks, Chris, for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs>